and welcome to the Carbotrage Podcast, episode 298. We hope you were thinking about your Yang Wang. Head on over That's, to Patreon. That is the name of the episode. It is. <laughs> but also, we hope you're thinking about your Yang Wang. You'll find out what that means later. <laughs> Head on over to patreon.com forward slash carbitrage. On the super cool handcrafted website, you'll find three open-ended levels of support starting at just a buck a month. For content consumers like you to support content producers like us, head on over to patreon.com forward slash carbitrage. All right, beer. I am still actually on my first hams. I'm moving a little bit slow today. You have a fresh in your Oppenheimer, it looks like? Yes. Excellent. Um, um, actually, let's take my first topic and just make that to the Yang Wang story. Yang Wang. Uh, uh, BYD Yang Wang. This one. So, BYD has a truck, apparently. Reface it for us, yes. Apparently, BYD has a truck called a Yang Wang U8. My dreams are definitely being built on Yang's Wang. Yang's Wang. So, Yang's Wang um, <laughs> apparently has a premium edition. Okay. Uh, that has more screens than some houses. Ooh. Uh, a refrigerator. A 70-inch augmented reality head-up display. So the entire windshield? Yes. Okay. The entire windshield is a head-up display with augmented reality. Oh, screw ads. Sorry. Um, and it has uh, 1,184 horsepower. Oh. That is a lot of power. Yeah. Uh, how does it produce that power? With electricity, I assume. Uh, how many motors? Several. I don't know. Mm. I haven't looked that far into it. How? What is the story on the backseat bed? Uh, we're getting to that. Okay. So it has twenty or twenty-two inch wheels. Ooh, okay. Um, it is has the uh, a floating roof, I guess, which is what does that mean? That's a design uh, where they make everything look like a window all the way around. So I don't know why oh. I told you that because I don't really care. Flush mounted door handles. Okay, octagonal spare tire cover. That's kind of cool, actually. Uh, has um, there are twenty three point six inch inch displays for the driver and front passenger. <laughs> what are the things on the top of the roof? Uh, we're getting to that. Okay. Um, they're joined by a twelve point eight inch infotainment system with port uh, with a portrait orientation. Uh, you can s- <laughs> there's uh, a dual screen rear entertainment system. So there's two rear televisions. Um, and a display integrated into the second row armrest. <laughs> it's a, literally a Chinese movie theater. I was going to say, like, they're just putting everything they make into this. <laughs> Every single product made in China is all put into this one vehicle. Well, I mean, not even just China, but like BYD <laughs> alone, man. It's got Napa leather seats. Sapele, or Sapele? Sapele? S-A-P-E-L-E? I've never heard of this kind of wood. Know. It's got wood trim. Um, high-speed wireless... Smartphone chargers. Ooh, it has tire blowout stabilization. Uh, starlit sunroof. Um, 22 speaker premium audio system. <laughs> More speakers than I own. <laughs> oh, get all of my combined cars and my house. This has more speakers. Um, oh my God. And then, yeah, a 70 inch augmented reality head up display. The entire windshield is a head up display. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's pretty rad. I wonder how they project that. Um, probably with magic. Oh, okay. Uh, so the seats have 10 point matrix hot stone massage functionality, a fragrance diffuser, and a refrigerator that can run for 12 hours after the vehicle is shut off. Um, okay. So here's where we get to the, uh, the nuts the and bolts specs. of the power. Okay. Uh, four electric motors for combined output of 1,184 horsepower. Uh, it goes 0 to 62 in 3.6 seconds. This thing must weigh a lot. I cannot imagine this weighs any less than a Hummer. <laughs> like, th- this probably weighs as much as an actual movie theater. Um, 10,000 pounds, yeah, probably. Yes, yeah, so it's got okay fast charging capability, which, okay. Um, How many kilowatt? It, uh, 110 kilowatt. Oh, wow. Uh, apparently. That's pretty slow, actually. BYD says that you can go from 30% to 80% charge in 18 minutes. Okay, so it might have a really good charge curve then. Yeah, uh, I think that's what it is. Uh, it's uh, a vehicle load to vehicle to load capability. I have Neat. no idea what that means. Uh, it means you can plug in an adapter and power appliances off of your vehicle. Oh, very cool. All right. Um, and it's got a range of 621 miles. Baloney. Baloney. It has 110 kilowatt hours. That is not happening with a 70 trillion ton SUV. That is not happening. I mean, that's a fast charging capability. Mm, 
Yeah, 600 mile range with 110 kilowatt hours in an SUV. I'm Not just, happening. this is what China's telling us. Yeah, and every, but, everything that China's ever said has been entirely truthful for the entire history of mankind. I'm looking at an AliExpress ad right now, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, that looks like yeah. an AliExpress mm-hmm. ad. It's, it's, just, <laughs> it's, uh, it's rippling animations of where all the speakers are in the interior. So it's got, there's more stuff that they put into this. They put 38 different sensors for a LiDAR. Just for LiDAR. So that's what the bumps are on the top then, I'm guessing? Uh, they have 5 millimeter wave radars, 14 <laughs> ultrasonic sensors, 16 cameras. Uh, it's got adaptive cruise control, automatic parking assist, automated valet parking, <laughs> highway driving assist, city navigation autopilot, uh, and they will still do over-the-air updates. This is an entire Chinese police station. <laughs> this is designed to monitor every moment of your life in the, in the nation of China. It's Ding a Jiao mobile Ping surveillance knows, state. Yeah, no, it's literally, this is a mobile surveillance van that you own privately that can go a billion miles an hour. So it's honestly cool looking. Like, that's a it's fact. It's a good looking Yang Wang. Yeah, the Yang Wang looks awesome. I really BMW, like... BMW, this is how you handle headlights that aren't on the top of your grill, okay? Yes. Also, if you... Look, the octagonal spare tire cover is actually pretty rad. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, they have a, a photo next to some horses as well. Yeah, click through the stock uh, photos. They're pretty cool here. Yang Wang. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Octa. Okay. It does have a stop sign for a spare tire. I think one of the things that's very funny... So you know how China is like, persecuting Uyghurs because they're Muslim? Um, if you go to photo number nine of ten, there's definitely a, a Muslim minaret in the background. Where? That's a minaret. Oh, <laughs> that, yeah. That, the, that this is, TV has a very poor yes. viewing angle. <laughs> that is a minaret. Wow. I just think that's very humorous that China put that in there. Like, yeah, this isn't a problem. We aren't doing any of that. This is the most Chinese vehicle I've ever heard of in my life. Yep. That's it. So that's it. Amazing how far the Chinese auto manufacturers but have come. 1,184 horsepower in every single thing that's ever been sold on Alibaba. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yes. Like, yep. the, 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 everything that China makes in one vehicle. Mm-hmm. This isn't a halo car for BYD. This is a halo vehicle for the entire, like, Chinese industrial complex. <laughs> I just, it's so interesting. I mean, it's as interesting as you could possibly get with an SUV. I just, I couldn't be bothered about the SUV part, but... Well, yeah, no, it's it's funny because it's stupid. It's stupid and it's probably bad. Like, well, oh yeah, no, there's there's zero chance that there's gonna be a single Yang Wang running in 2030. Every single one of these will have broken seven years. Like, well, I'm looking forward to buying the battery modules in Alibaba. Yeah, that'll be great. Um, cool logo, by the way. I don't even know what I'm looking at. It looks like a backwards S with some additional lines on it. Uh, it's a very cool Yang Wang Can I logo. just say that they missed their opportunity with a vehicle called Yang Wang for a fancy logo? Yeah. yeah. I mean, missed opportunity. Yeah. No, I mean, like, at least they have, like, the little round bits. It looks, like, suspiciously phallic, but not quite all the way there. Yeah, it's got, like, a Defender Lexus GX kind of Yeah, if this was actually good, that'd be very cool. I agree, like, but I can't imagine. I can't imagine this it's is going good. to be good. No, but this is a good photo. Though. There's horses. I like that a lot. There are horses by the Yang Wang. Kind of how huge it is. It is so massive. <laughs> it is the biggest vehicle tiny. in the world. But this is probably a bad Photoshop. This but. actually is not a wetland. This is a normal prairie that the weight of the Yang Wang has pushed down so far that it has reached the water basin. And it's pushing water out of the ground all around the vehicle. That was actually a dry field before they pulled Yeah, that was a dry field before that vehicle pushed down all of the land down to the water basin. Now those horses are trapped. I'm genuinely... I have no... uh, (laughs) B-Y-D. Are you going to look up the weight? I I need to know the weight. (laughs) Okay, so we've we've been saying for years that worse cars are better. Oh, this makes more sense. The base model... It was a, like the like the normal U8, not the super fancy one, is uh, one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Oh, and it floats. No way. Is a one hundred fifty thousand dollar floating off road EV. How can it float? The thing probably weighs. I as imagine much as the a moon. base model floats. Okay. Yeah. So the base model is one hundred fifty grand. What is? What can you price it up to? Um. Oh. 
God, what does this go up to? I have no idea. There's so much like just weird information that I don't fully believe. One hundred and fifty grand is too much for the best one. Well, that's the thing is like if you look at all the crap that's in this, like, yeah. like it's only got one hundred and ten kilowatt hour battery. What is the top speed? Look at what a Rivian costs. The Rivian's less than that. It can well, go. It can go two hundred kilometers per hour. That was one hundred and sixty-five. Okay, this makes a little bit more sense. All right. Or no, that's um, 120. 7,628 pounds. For the base or the... No, that's how much the fully loaded one is. Okay, that's 1,000 pounds lighter than a Rivian R1S. I don't believe that. I don't either. That or it's got no airbags or any safety <laughs> equipment. It is just a perimeter frame <clears throat> with oh, some oh, sheet no. metal and an entire computer. The battery is a structural member and that is the the only one actually. Yeah, apparently. I okay, don't so I just don't believe that. This won't be serviceable. That must be the base model. That has to be the base model. Yeah, I'm guessing that's got to be a base model with a smaller battery. Yeah, cuz like that makes sense that that would float because like okay. If they, if, this, if you trust the seals on a Chinese Yang Wang. I don't know if my Yang Wang has good enough seals I for this. I don't trust the buoyancy of any Yang Wang. So BYD Yang Wang curve rate, and then wait, and then uh, uh, U8 pricing. <laughs> what a ridiculous vehicle! Not just because of its name. Okay, yeah, no. All right, so the premium edition loan we saw is one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Oh, okay. I don't believe. How is this that cheap? I like that there are. There's no reliable information about this. Yeah, no. This seems like is this actually made in China? This just it seems like it might be made in North Korea. Like, I think from the the quality of this information. I think that's too much money still for what it offers. I don't know, man. Like, if this was like, I could see this being kind of 160 grand. You know, if I was looking for a truck. Not as a first gen product. If this oh, was a fully no. developed thing sold by Land Rover, sure, they could sell it for 150 grand. Yeah. Well, I think because what this is, what this is, is this is their Halo car. Like, this is BYD doing, like, everything they possibly can. I look forward to all those drivetrain components getting into a VinFast. Yes, that'd be very good. Um, you know BYD is supplying all that crap no, in VinFast. Oh, really? All the parts come from China, but... Uh, SAIC, yes, but not, oh, okay. not BYD. Okay, fine. Um, no, VinFast... So, Vietnam and China have a... They're really competitive with each other. Because, like, China's bullied Vietnam more than America has. Like, Yikes. historically. Great. Yeah. Super good. So, that's why, like, in Vietnam, they don't use Chinese characters. Okay. They use Roman characters. Hmm. Um, because, like, China, like, they, they're, like, they're, they're, part, they're, like, they're, they're, geolo they're geographically close. They're both communists. Sure. But China has invaded Vietnam in the 20th century. China has been invaded Vietnam and vassalized and annexed it historically several times. Um, Thanks, China. Yeah, China and Vietnam don't get along very well. That's why we're being so buddy buddy with them now. But um, yeah, the BYD Yang Wang. It's one hundred and sixty thousand dollars <laughs> of Chinese movie theater, and it's going to be broken in four years' time. Yeah, no, Completely absolutely. Completely broken. I have no faith that this will continue to operate. Anyway, speaking of EVs that will not be broken in four years' time. I want to briefly, and I can't play this because it's this YouTube, is but Korean as well. It is. So the Hyundai Ionic 5N has now lifted its veil enough. Why don't you click mute? I'm going to. <clears throat> I don't know why that. Oh, this, no, no, it's stuck. I don't know why that started. But they did two consecutive hot laps on the Nordschleife and the Ionic 5N. And guess what the battery pack temperature was after that? In a plaid, it would be literally on fire and thermal throttling. Um, what what is the operational temperature usually? Ideal operational temperature is 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I would say 115. Almost dead on. It was 114 wow. degrees. Wow. Oh, my yep. God. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> well, it seemed like, hmm, you know, they're going to make something that's better than Tesla. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to quite be, like, normal because they just beat the shit out of it. The battery chemistry, this is just proof that, like, Tesla just didn't put enough time and effort into engineering their packs. Because I go to uh, Pikes Peak. There's always a series of Teslas that run up that mountain. All of them are thermal throttling halfway up. And that's a 12-mile circuit. Well, I mean, with Tesla, um, I'm standing up. So yeah, I know the chair is stuck. Um, with Tesla, I think what they're doing is they're having to move too fast now. Because they had a technological lead and they squandered it. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're being a Model T. And, oh, man, God, Elon yeah. Musk, Musk and Ford are the same person. Elon Musk, Henry Ford, and Thomas Edison are all the same human being. Oh. Like, don't be an Elon Musk, Henry Ford, or Thomas Edison. You want to be like an actual Tesla. 
Like, you want, you want to be like a, like a Tesla or a, uh, who's a rich person that didn't totally suck that was in mogul? Carnegie, I guess. You want to be like a Carnegie. That's a really tough question to be primed on that quickly. Uh, <laughs> who's a really rich person that didn't fully suck? That like founded an industry. Oh, I think, man. I think Carnegie would probably be the best. Yeah, I'll take your word on he, that. Because he, he was a philanthropist at least. Okay. So, oh, actually, Bill, Bill Gates seems like a decent person, right? Yeah, Bill Gates hasn't done too much bad things. Okay. Fine. Yeah, you want to be a Bill Gates. You want to be a Carnegie. You want to be a Tesla. You don't want to be a Musk, Edison, Henry Ford, yeah. I'm just waiting for Tesla to rebut this, and they'll they'll do two laps, and then they'll pull out the high-voltage contacts and stick it into an elephant. <laughs> that literally is what they're going to do, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, Our battery still has enough energy to kill an elephant after doing two laps. Well, that's pretty nifty. Um, I like the high end attic 5N. So, um, oh, my things are moved around more than I thought they were. Uh, I want to talk about another weird truck okay. that you would not expect me to talk oh. about. I saw one of these in real life, and they're not nearly as cursed as you'd imagine. Okay. They are cursed EVs, don't get me wrong. I'm talking about... Oh, my oh, God. What? Autoplay audio ads. Are you... I'm kidding Get me. out of your car scoops. Okay, I got to, um, the whole thing. The 2024 Buick and Vista. Yeah, and not I had, nearly as I know. I I had to double check. I had to look at it like eight times. I was driving the Lexus behind. I'm like, is that same Victor? <laughs> I was like really excited. As for you're a getting closer, no, it does not. No, it does not. But it it honestly it does look aesthetically pleasing. Like, it looks it, it's, a lot better than a Nissan Kicks. Yeah, I mean this is. Um, about as good of a modern Buick as I've seen in a long time, uh, aside from the 2RX. Why did Buick steal Seat's logo? Um, because this is their tri-shields, or as I like to call it, the triple dick. Ah, okay. Because Man, it, this is a dick-themed episode. Yeah, so um, <laughs> their logo in the 60s, they had more details in the shields. Mm -hmm. And in the shields, they had these flowers um but the flowers is like a stem with like leaves. Okay. And it looked like a dick. More or less it, than Dodge of Burnsville? On par. Ima Whoa. Imagine <laughs> each of the shields has three Dodge Burnsville <laughs> logos within it. So they looked like is the triple, triple dick. <laughs> triple, triple. Yeah. <laughs> the, the triple, triple. <laughs> Um, but anyway, about the Invista, oh this would look really good lowered about four inches with smaller wheels on it. And the brakes are pretty pathetic. And the cladding painted. Yeah, but the brakes are pretty pathetic, so you can put smaller wheels on it, um, which oh, is wow. a good thing. Yeah, you see what I mean? Yeah. Like, you could totally drop that wheel size like two inches. It'd be fine. Um, 137 horsepower, 162 pound-feet of torque. Is it normally aspirated? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, it's, uh, I, I can't be that bothered with a crossover, dude. I would imagine um, that it is, but. But it makes, it's got the 30 miles per gallon combined. It's mm -hmm. 28 city, 32 highway, remarkably consistent. Um, but this is the cool part. Base price. $23,495. And again, that is properly cheap these days. Yeah, and that's a lot of car for that price. Um, so, it's, yeah, it is a crossover, which sucks. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. The base model, you do get 17-inch wheels, which would actually be a lot better than the 22s. Yeah, it would just, ride uh, way better. It would look so much better, too. Um, and yeah, it's got the integrated rear spoiler. It's got those, like, s the slender headlights and everything. Mm -hmm. The inside looks pretty decent. Uh, to me, I like that you have physical climate controls. That actually is really cool to me. Because uh, a lot of cars don't have that these days. And it is cheaper to just not make them. The interior looks dated, but I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm fine. I don't really care about I like it. knobs and buttons. Yeah, give me more buttons. Like, a dated interior is what I want. Like, the correct interior layout is the 1990 Pyant Grand Prix oh, GTP. God. Where the entire steering no. wheel was buttons. No. It was a keyboard. No. no, I hated that. No, you know what was good about that? I didn't have to dig through a single fucking menu on that damn True. car. Every single thing. I'm like, man, yeah. I want to mute solely 91.1 .1 FM, but I want to keep the radio loud on 89.3. I have a button for that. <laughs> I want to simultaneously resume my cruise control and change my radio station. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so fully loaded. Oh, it is a turbo. Okay. It is turbo. That's fine. Three um, cylinder turbo engine. Whoa. One what? 1.2 liter, three cylinder turbo. That's sick. Okay. That's it, really It's cool. going to sound good then. I'm a f See, I told you it's a cool vehicle. Uh, odd Mac crossover said, uh, 
but uh, oh, they're they're even comparing it to the kicks down here. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's better in every way. It's, it's a, a regular song. auto though, which is nice. It's That's not a CVT. Sick. Good yeah. um, proof that it is on an aged platform. Yeah, this, this, I'm very okay with that. Um, but yeah, like even fully loaded, it's only it only like peaks at like um, the Invista Avenir uh, peaks at twenty nine thousand six ninety five. Avenue is a trim? Yes, okay. and then that gives you painted cladding and a dark chrome grill Ooh. and a power lift gate and 19-inch wheels with a pearl nickel finish. So buy the base model and get the cladding from the Avenir. Yep, Done. that's what you want. Uh, and so, yeah, that would be pretty cool, actually. And it's a three-cylinder. Like, this will this sound pretty sick. Like, lower that, put an exhaust on it. Like, that's a pretty cool Buick. And it's also a Buick. Like, it's not supposed to have a manual. Like, I know that manual is better. It is. But Buick has always been just a better Cadillac. That platform is probably like an old cruise, so you can probably bolt a stick in there. Yeah. But like, this is the thing. Like, wh- like, the best way to describe Buick is that it is a better Cadillac. Like, a Cadillac is so far into luxury that you might as well just get a Mercedes. Mm-hmm. But a Buick, you still have, like, you still have some performance com- I mean, capabilities to it. Like The thing I like about modern Buick is it's largely just pulling from other foreign GM entities, yeah. which make cars better. Yeah. So. This is actually might be my favorite GM product. Uh, I'll take a CT5 V Blackwing. I really don't like Cadillac. Yeah, but LT4 as a with rule, a six V. It's a rule. I don't like Cadillac. If it was not a Cadillac, I'd be the thing. I'm just not Cadillac. Guy. Yeah, there's no other. I can't think of any other GM product I actually like. So another cool thing about this is fifteen hundred dollars cheaper than a Corolla Cross, which good. I good. Hate the that is Cross. a stupid vehicle. Does not need to exist. <sighs> um, but yeah, no turbocharged three cylinder like that has to be out of something interesting. Oh yeah. There's no lame car with a turbo three cylinder. No. I, and that... Also, future swap candidate for Metro. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You imagine one hundred and sixty-two foot pounds of torque in a Metro. Oh my hilarious. God. And that's no tuning with the stock exhaust. Yeah, that's everything. That would be, that'd be hilarious. Wow. Um, I'm sure GM will have ruined that engine somehow, but. Oh yeah, no, it's totally wildly unreliable. But I mean, like, it's cool enough. Like, I don't know. I'm not mad about this. Um, let's see here. It does. It said it takes a considerable amount of time to hit sixty. Oh, and the engine and the engine screams the whole way there. Good. That's the sales pitch. I want to hear an acceleration video of one of these now. Yeah, it weighs three thousand pounds, which is that's a lot. Three thousand pounds? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not that bad. I just these days I mean, that is a yeah, light car. True. I'm just thinking of like other cars. Basically, what they did is they took um, a lot of specs out of a GR Corolla and just made it kind of like worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no way that this engine is going to be as charismatic. Oh, man, that's just, there's two different uh, suspension setups available. Like, completely different. So you can get... Um, is one of them just mag ride, or what do you mean? No, there's McPherson struts up front with a uh, Watts link in the back. Um, S- weird. Okay, does that it? mean it's a torsion bar? Well, they, I feel like, because they, they just call it, what's the Watts link? Is this not even available as all-wheel drive? Maybe not. That would be kind of cool. Oh, okay, that's cool. So a Watts link is like a double torsion bar. Okay. You have a central like mounting point and then two little torsion bars that come off each side. <laughs> I like that little jiggle you did just then to demonstrate the... This is cool. I, this is an interesting vehicle. Um, I really hope that it's not available as all-wheel drive. Yeah. I didn't see any mention of all-wheel drive in there. So. It might not be. Hmm. Good. Like, that's kind of cool. Like, I like how, how shitty this is. You know that was based on an interesting hatchback. I bet that's based on a second-gen cruise. Oh, yeah, or some weird, like, Chinese market car. Yeah, like a Vauxhall, whatever. Yeah, like, this is... Yeah, it's... But this is the thing is, this is the entry-level Buick. Like, this is kind of... Like, I'm not mad about this. I'm just trying to see if they had more... Look okay, up. so I guess it's Watts Link in the back and McPherson up front. That's what they meant. Sure. That makes sense. Okay. I just... Okay, modern... Look at this. Oh, thing. okay. So they have two different suspension setups. That's what they meant. So you can get, like, the soft, cushy Avenir style one, or okay. they have one that's closer to, like, an ST. They, they have the sports touring I, Yeah, version. I saw that. That one starts at 25. I think that's yeah. the mid-trim. So the sports touring has stiffer suspension. Okay. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so you get the... Well, and actually, no. You get the base, you get lowering springs. Yep. And then you put the Avenir cladding on it. 
Or you find the whatever sedan version. Yeah, like true. The, it's sold in Europe. <laughs> yeah. And then you just put those struts and springs onto it, and then you're good. Problem solved. Yeah. This is, I, I'm not mad about this. Like, because this is also, this is coming from a brand that is historically done nothing of import. Literally since the Grand National oh, in yeah. 1987. Like, I will include the Tour X in that. Like, it was, the, it was, in, it was cool, but it really, at the end of the day, it was not anything to write home about. Also wasn't really a Buick. No. And, like, also, like, it was cool. It was like, okay, at the end of the day, it's still only automatic as a know. sports wagon. And only had one engine option, which was fine, adequate, but it wasn't charismatic. Yeah, and it, 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 it wasn't exciting. Three cylinder. This is, this is cool. It's a three-cylinder. It can become a sedan, I imagine, at some point. Or you could just lower it. Yeah. yeah, like, I'm very curious what platform this is on. I'm sure we could figure that out, but I... I it's got, what, a 6T45E in it, so you know it's an older platform. I bet this is based on the second-gen cruise. But that engine obviously wasn't available in the second-gen cruise, so it might be a new powertrain, like all new. I don't know, man. But that means that that engine's probably swappable, like you said, with a bunch of other GM components, because you know that transmission's not a new design. Okay, so it is... It shares a platform with the tracks. Oh, wow. Okay, so that, that gives me a place to go down. All right. Yeah, I, so, wonder, I wonder if that shares its platform with any... I, it must share it with a car. I just can't remember if that's on, like, the Sonic. Oh, that might be the Sonic. This might be a Daewoo platform. Yeah! Give me a Daewoo. <laughs> <laughs> Give me bingo. Anyway. Chevy Trax platform. Sorry, I, I don't mean for dead air. I'm s quickly studying While you this. look at okay, that... Okay, here we go. So it's from 2008... Uh, South Korea small vehicle development team. Uh, tracker. That sounds seeker. like... Pontiac. Oh, wait. No, wait. No. I think that's the Hang Sonic. On. Tracker. I think that's the Sonic, dude. Gamma 2. It is a Veo Sonic. You're right. Yep. Yep. So, and the Opel Maka Buick Encore. Uh, so, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. You can lower it. There's yeah. Chevy Sonic lowering springs. You have the sick three-cylinder. That's... I, I designated that actually a cool car. I'm not mad about that. When, that is a car that brings me joy. Since we're talking about hopped up little turbo three cylinders, oh, yeah. I want to talk about the Yaris and Corolla GR. Yeah. This little engine was born out of rallying and homologation. I feel like this is rodent. And, <laughs> dude, people have a lot of fun with the RS GRs. Like, yeah, this I don't, is good. That car is so spunky and so fun. Some maniac, though has squeezed 740 what? horsepower out of that three-cylinder with a stock bottom end. Holy shit. Yeah. So we give the LS a nod for taking power. We, we give no, the fucking LS. We give the K-Series a nod for taking That's power. That's cool. This little, I haven't put the, uh, the engine designator in here. The G16E is what that engine is called. That is... And, dude, screw 1,000 horsepower 2JZs. This thing's making almost that with half the... Cylinders and less than half the displacement. That's really cool. A third of the displacement. Less than a third. I like it. Yeah, that's a one really, liter, isn't it? It's a, it, well, G16 would be a one point. Oh, is it a 1.6? 4AG. No, I don't know what it is. Uh, it doesn't matter. Three cylinder. I think it's a 1.3 or something, but 1.6. 1.6, okay. Yeah. So that it's, a, it's, a chunky, it's a chunky little three cylinder, but wow, it's so much power. That's so cool. How are you getting How 740 you horsepower through three rod bearings? There'd be four. Oh, rod four, bearings. Four right mains, yeah. Four mains, yeah. I'm just like, I'm like oh, wait, what? <laughs> wait, is it like... <laughs> I've seen manufacturers where they like split the bearings, so you get two half-size bearings <laughs> on no, like a V engine. That. Okay, yeah. all right, no. good. Uh, but that's really cool. I, I like that a lot. But that's, everyone that's always worried about, like, oh, well, the Corolla GR uses the Yaris engine, but it's tuned up a little bit more. Is that going to hurt it? No. I'm like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely nope. not. That's really cool. God, I really hope that that GM3 cylinder is just as good. It might be. I'm C three cylinders are in here only better. I mean, it's probably not because the Toyota one is again. It's a rally engine, which probably so, was running that kind of power from the get go. There's never been a Toyota. There's never been a GM engine that's anywhere near as good as a good Toyota engine. But like, you never know. Like maybe you could tune that little three cylinder in the. If I could get, if I could tune up a, in in Vista. Yep. Yeah, in Vista to be like about. Like 300 horsepower would feel really good on that, I think. That'd be really cool. I want somebody um, to put a, a... Also, for scale, an Invista's about the same size as Janice, yes. 
Really? They're not big. What? Oh, I would have thought it was smaller than that. Well, I mean, like, just like the amount of space it takes. It's well, like I believe you because there's two feet between where you hit the pedestrian <laughs> know, right? and the, and the first metal piece yeah. in the vehicle. No, it's a really small vehicle. Like, the, well, it's based off the tracks. It's tiny. Yeah, it's a really tiny little truck. Like, this is a cool thing. Yeah, I love that it's a Daewoo. Yeah, that's great. This is great too. I really. This is a good three cylinder episode. People are. I like maniacs. every every vehicle we're talking about here so far today. Uh, has had, had some a... sort of wacky engine in it. <laughs> we should have talked about the one liter EcoBoost. Then, damn. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, anyway. if they should have made something worth talking about, they so. should have. That engine actually wasn't that great. All right, so I want to talk about the uh, new GR or the new. What the hell is it called? The eight six FTGTB Z eighty six R forty fifth anniversary edition. They made a special edition that's worth talking about because this okay. is actually really cool. So if you scroll down, they have the video. You don't have to watch it, but stop. Hang on. All right, black door handles like on a AE86. You have the black wheels, i.e. AE86. Uh, it comes with four piston Brembo uh, front brakes, two pistons in the rear. Nice. Uh, hang on. Sax ZF dampers. So it has different struts. Um, you can have a dual stripe door color. Oh my god! Um, door a decal that says since 1983 40th. It looks like the 4A GE, the 16 valve it thing does that look they like the sprinter turn. Yeah, it looks like that. It's really cool. And then when you look inside, it, it's got a great interior. You got the red accents on the doors, just like on a 86. That's exactly the colorway that they had it. What the hell's going on with the dash? Uh, the that static. is a radio block F. I like that. Yeah, I told you. I like this that. is a really cool special edition because there's a optional radio. Uh, also, the spoiler is black, is like on A86. Uh, I yeah, like the this... shape of that duck bill, but I mean, I appreciate the nod. I yeah, do. it's a good nod. Uh, if you scroll down, uh, you see that you have the accents on the red on the seats. Uh, A86 has had a very interesting colorway where the side bolster, the sides of the seats were red, okay, but the the actual back portion was black. Except good. halfway through, it went red again oh. on the seat. It was really weird, but they didn't do it on this one for probably for the best. Yeah, I was gonna say it probably it throws me off. It throws me off a little bit um, when I see it. I like the embroidery on the door panel. So too. normally, um, normally special editions are kind of like, meh, you know. Nobody cares. Well, we talked about it. it. was several years ago at this point, but the the old body style, they had done a special edition where it had that homage front end. Yeah. And the, the special editions on the GTBRZ86 have actually been pretty interesting. Yeah, but like normally with cars, just like as a whole. Yeah. Like the, outside of the Fiat 500, I agree with you. Yeah. Like there's like outside <laughs> the Fiat 500, but like normally it's like, all right, look at Subaru. Like they have like the ultra red edition uh, cross track, which has just a special gloss red paint that is available on WRX and not otherwise available on a cross track. Okay. That's sure. it. That's all it does. All right. It doesn't do anything different. Um, then you have... Oh, so special? Yeah. Like, you have, like, like the Platinum Edition Hyundai Sonata, which comes with uh, a different chrome trim on the door handles, and it's silver on gray with silver wheels. It's platinum. Get it? Yeah, great. Yeah, I really want. That. So that's what I'm talking about. Like those suck, but this is like this is like Kia Soul White Tiger level good. I'm sorry, run that one by me again. Can, you should just Google it. Control T, Kia Soul White Tiger Edition. White or light? White. W H I T Tiger. Oh my god. Yeah, that was from the LMFAO music video. Oh. No, that was a real. You could buy those. I sold several, or I remember like detailing several of those. So look how cool they look. <laughs> With the white wheels. <sighs> I don't like that. They're so cool. <sighs> but I mean, like, that's the thing. It's like, they actually made a cool special edition. Like, you, you have to say, like, for a special edition on a soul. That's the kind of thing that's going to age really well, but I hate now. Yeah, exactly. It's like the Lancer I, Ra OZ Rally Edition. Like, stupidest thing ever when it launched. Now, yeah. like, seeing a clean one of those, I'm like, that's really cool. Yeah, <laughs> I love that because I like dumb, campy things like that. Like, this is great. So, that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's how I feel. Like, this is a very cool special edition that's going to be, like... If you're going to get this vehicle, this is the one to get. If, if you get a Soul, you're going to get a White Tiger. There's no other Soul to get. If you're thinking about getting a 400Z Nismo, buy this. Yeah, this is better in every way. It is. Um, but yeah, it keeps scrolling down. There's great photos of it. Like It just looks incredible. Look at that parking brake. Yeah. Just flexing your manual non-electric parking brake. With your 
Red, red striping. Mm -hmm. That's really good. I mean, that's got to be a pretty significant additional cost to like customize the interior like that. But if if you ordered this interior from Porsche, it would cost you forty thousand dollars. Oh, absolutely. No, oh, you want to customize the piping? <laughs> yeah. No, this is just good. I'm a big fan of it. They also have like multi-spoke wheels, like on the E86. I wish the wheels were silver. Uh yeah. I, I can, don't know. I can always powder coat them. I Not just, that I will ever buy one. Yeah, I'd say I just leave it as it is. And I like the door graphic and the nod to the Truno, but I wish it said twin cam 16 valve. I mean, it's quad cam. Right, but twin cam can reference a cylinder yes. layout. So you're right. I Also, quad cam 16 valve would be kind of cool, though. Yeah. Although, but, what the, the rumor we talked about like two months ago, it sounds like that three-cylinder turbo might be coming to this car in a GR. Maybe that's why they're not... Oh. See, hey, then it would be... Maybe. Oh, and then it, but it wouldn't be 16 valve. No, but ma maybe that's why <laughs> you're not seeing that. Because huh. when they make a performance version, it'll yeah. have fewer valves and fewer cylinders. I just really hope that the special edition is a single cam 12 valve. But Toyota's done that turbo. for ages. And like the uh, the uh, the Alteza, the high performance model was a four cylinder turbo, and the the base was a six cylinder. Yeah, but they never wrote the specs. Right, right. For the base model, I'm just saying that they've had yeah. a history of putting a, a yes. tinier engine. No, that's the... true. But that's the thing is, like when they do that, they don't say like, "Oh, hey, base model, guess what? You get the 2.5 liter." You don't see like you don't see it, like the NA, or you don't see like a Camry being like 2.5 four cylinder. You know, I like written on the door. Are you, you know, they should do that, man. That's the BYD school for thought, right? Yeah, I true. love that about. All right, I guess the 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 Celica is literally like the the Celica is the one I thing about. You get the the two point the five AGE or the five AFE was the base engine, and the three SFE was the turbo engine, right? Uh, the five it was, it was FTE the, was the it was, turbo one. Yeah, or I'm talking about the '90s ones. You yeah, had the, just the 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 two point five liter whatever Camry engine. Uh, 2.4 is 2.4. Five, five yeah, 2.4. Yeah. Yep. Five SFE. Two, 2.4 Camry engine, and then you get the two liter turbo for the performance version. Three SGTE. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, yep. Yes. You're not going to write 2.5 liter at the right. base model, and right. then you see turbo, and the turbo says, but the 2.0 is smaller. Like. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. The, the MR2 is the same, obviously, the same way. Yeah. Because yeah, the base was a 2.2. And the upgraded was a 2.0. Exactly. Turbo. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. They don't call it an MR2 2.0 turbo. They call it an MR2 turbo. Yeah, because you're gotcha. not talking about the fact that it's got a smaller engine. Yeah. Anyway, I like it, but it should have the three-cylinder in it. Yeah. No, I think, um, yeah, make this a special edition and oh, then have so some cool. some wacky three-cylinder. I'd be very into that. I mean, I assume they could make a GRMN with that engine. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, it would be really be, good. It would be really tempting. I'm a big fan of the second generation. I like the second gen 8.6 so much more. It is a much better looking car. <laughs> it's a way better vehicle in and every I way. And I think the FV24 is a little bit better than the FV20. It's still, it's still the same engine. It's still awful. Okay. I have no faith in any of the FV engines ever. I don't Never either. again. No. Really, do you know if the radio is an option or if you have to have it without one? I think it's optional, okay. but I really like it with the radio block off. That's much better. Hey, you buy that and you put one of those like Bluetooth modules behind it. You just don't have yeah. the radio. Yeah. You don't do that. You just put it, you put an amplifier behind it with yep. the aux cord and Three. the aux cord comes oh, out yeah. like in the ashtray. Yeah. Goes right by the manual shifter and the manual handbrake. I like that. That's idea. actually, uh, speaking of that is going to be one of my projects over winter is uh, fixing the radio in the Buick Beauty. and adding uh, Bluetooth. Nice. Because... I assume you're just going to leave the factory head unit in place and just run a module behind the dash, or...? Yeah, you can actually keep the factory head unit, take okay. power from it, and then run power to a little separate board that just has a Bluetooth module with okay. a signal cable yep. that is the on-off switch for it. Very cool. I, um, I'm looking at that same module type for the 1600. And so what I was going to do is on the Buick, there's a rear speaker button to turn on and off the rear speaker. That's interesting. But it's actually really convenient because how many times are you in the car and then the back passenger's like, I can't hear anything. And you're like, oh, sorry. I'll turn down the rear speakers only. Just got to do what the blue car does, which is only have working rear speakers. Yeah, and so you can just take, <laughs> I can just take the rear speaker button and just switch it to be that's my Bluetooth button now. Sure, all right. And so I think that'd be kind of cool. I'm into that. Yeah. I think that's a fantastic idea. And then it would still look like it'd still be a sonomatic. Like it wouldn't be a retro sound. Oh, I've got a wood grain blau punked in my 1600. Like I'm not getting yeah, rid of no, that. Like, no, like this has like vacuum tubes on it. <laughs> like this is super cool. 
I want like vacuum tubes. And I want my stereophonic, technically, uh, stereo where I have one speaker up front, one speaker in back. Wake me when it's quadraphonic. I don't want quadraphonic. <laughs> quadraphonic would entail digging into the door cards and shit. Oh, yeah. I don't no, I'm do not actually. Or actually the kick panels. I had to undo a bunch of speaker butchery in my car. So no, I'm not, I'm not going to I'm not gonna have any Tom Fucker you here. Good. Like, Very good. Yeah, that's going to be really good. And Jan also okay lowering it. Her one stipulation is, um, I'm not sure if you've ever seen the Buick move, have you? Uh, We've I've seen never... pull into Cars and Crafts. Or no, uh, Cars and Coffee. Cars and Coffee, yeah. yeah. So... Have you ever seen how the rear end, when it goes over a bump, goes side to side? No. Oh, well, that's a thing with three-link rear ends, is it goes side to side. Sure. Because it doesn't have the lock. That's not it doesn't. It does, it, well, it's the, the only Pan suspension. Panhard bar. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. It, so it does have its panhard bar. Okay. But on the four-link, you have two suspension arms on each side of the live axle. Okay. Um, and then you have your panhard bar, and then you have your struts, right? Sure. This one is a torque tube, so they connect to the torque tube in the center. So oh, it's a no. triangle. Oh, no. Which is, it's fine. Um, it, it's totally, it's actually a... But I feel like that would make it, yeah, like, like torsionally wobby. Like, like yeah. yaw wobble. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. That's what it does. Oh, great. Jana's only stipulation is she does not want the yaw wobble to go away. I said, so long as I keep the torque tube in there, you're going to get the yaw wobble. Don't you even worry about that. You're going to get the rear end jiggling from side to side. Now that we've started labeling episodes, I really want to like call it yaw wobble. or like. Oh, we should call it that. <clears throat> that's yeah. all right. No, that's all right. No, the yang wang is a yang good Yang wang is better. Yeah. And but, we talked about nothing but freaking three cylinders in this episode, too. So, whoops. Yeah, three cylinders <laughs> or electric motors. So, good. Speaking of three cylinders. Yes. I'm going to bring up the Mirage again until we're blue in the face talking okay. about the Mirage and why yeah. they shouldn't have killed it. There is an actually fairly large pizza chain in Bloomington, Illinois. The dude has bought nothing but Mirages. For the last 10 years. And he says 20 they... 20 plus Mirages each year. Yeah. Which That's he, insane. He's bought over 200 Mirages because they are, and I quote, the most reliable delivery vehicle he's ever seen. Yeah, they're perfect. It's a perfect car. They're nice and cheap. They're cheerful. They get immensely good fuel economy. Why would you not want that? Exactly. Well, yeah, to bring a do. smile to everyone's face. Exactly. And he orders them in colors, which is very nice. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, Mirage. Yeah. That's... Thank you, three-cylinder engines. Yep. No, that's fun. Um, also, I told you I got to drive a CVT Mirage, right? With Johnny's, I assume. Yes, it was yeah. much worse. But yeah. to, like, to a benefit, much worse. Explain. Well, you know how Mirages aren't like actually technically good? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so like, the thing is, is like the car is struggling so much to do a normal task, and it's endearing. The CVT makes it worse. It's just trying so hard for you. Yes, it, it makes it worse, which is more fun. <laughs> and it, Johnny's <clears throat> on his horn, only the high tone works. So it's got the cutest horn in the world. Beep. So I'm sitting there going wide open throttle, car full of people with a three cylinder that's like stressed, beeping this adorable little horn. And then the prior owner of Johnny's <clears throat> car had modified it a little bit. So he'd like tinted the corner lights and put on cool hubcaps and LED headlights. Oh, my God. So it was just a hoot and I have to drive. I'm just picturing this in India. And, and put it in Bloomington. I wanted to see if I can get air with it, but it doesn't go fast enough. Not with that attitude, it doesn't. <laughs> I, need to, I, need, I need to speed up more. But, yeah, no, it's really fun. You go wide open throttle even more. I mean, I still have very fond memories of driving Kua's car. Yeah, no, there's no bad Mirage. Like, I, now that I've driven, I'd never driven a CVT before. And he has a CVT sedan, so he is objectively the worst that one. That is the worst Mirage. Yep, that is where Anson Silver. Oh, <laughs> and no. it's, But it's also SE, so it's fully loaded. Oh, yeah. uh, the heated seats get alarmingly hot. Are they cloth? Yes. yes. Heated cloth. They yes. get alarmingly hot alarmingly yes. quickly. That's a very low specific heat. Yes. In, in cloth, I, I like it. Yeah, no, it's it, it honestly makes it better. Like, this is a car, like, I could live with a CVT Mirage. Like, I'd be okay with that, because it's just so bad. I could live with a Mirage, but I, I just can't do CVT. No, that's fair. And I, I understand that's where I, I, that's, like, me. But, like, that's me, like, understanding that, like, I'm, the endearing part of this car is how bad it is. Yeah. Yeah. And but like, also, it's going to continue doing its job. Yes. So. The, the manual I would ultimately want for reliability purposes. Yeah. But, like, no, the CVT adds to the experience. Like, it really does make it objectively worse. It's so fun. Like, <laughs> it's just, it, I imagine it's similar to an automatic <laughs> Metro. Oh, my God. I have to imagine Metros were three-speed automatics. 
Oh, they had to have been. Oh. I could not imagine Suzuki ever imagine, putting a four-speed in dude, that. Dude, a 90s GM tall first auto gear. Well, it's not GM. That's gonna be a. That, that's gonna be a. Oh, it would be Suzuki. It'd be I a suppose. Suzuki. So it'd probably be a pretty okay first, and then second, Fair. and then a very long third. <laughs> I'm picturing like the first two ratios out of a ten speed, and then yeah. a second from a power glide. Yeah, basically. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, that's exactly what it'd be. One, right? two, nine. <clears throat> yeah, basically that's how I'd feel. Yeah, first, fifth. Doing, <laughs> oh my god, doing a mountain pass with an auto metro. Can you imagine the hunting? I can't imagine you would ever do that. You would have to blow the engine. Well, you'd have to over rev it. I don't know, probably fine. But it's an auto. It won't let you do oh, that. Well. I'm wondering. I was at, uh, so I'm in the Geo Metro Facebook group. Why? Why? Because I do want one. Um, specifically, I want a Swift GTI with. Oh the, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, cool. that's I mean that's, that's I'm cool. in the Geo Metro Facebook group because that's where the, that's where you find them. Suzuki Swift um, GTI is such an yeah. interesting vehicle. So, I was wondering. I was looking at the specs of F six A in the, the Geo Metro okay. inline three. Yep. And I'm wondering. Which one feasibly would be cheaper to make into what what could you make into a quick like highway worthy vehicle for the least amount of money? Would it be cheaper to put a cappuccino engine and some bolt ons or turbocharge the Metro three cylinder? I wonder were, were the three cylinders EFI? Yes they were. Well, that's pretty simple EFI. You might be able to get away with... I think it's toilet bowl EFI. A rising rate fuel pressure regulator. Yeah, and then a turbo. And a turbo. Because I, you know, I bet that's probably just like a log manifold that you could just bolt a tiny turbo 100%. into. 100%. And it probably still uses it a distributor, so you could just do oh, vacuum. No, it definitely does. The, then all you could do have. vacuum retard, yeah. Oh, man, I'm wondering. I'm just... Because I'm like, at that point, like, into the modifications of the three-cylinder to like... Which one would make like 120 horsepower and be reliable? That's what I'm wondering. Probably the cappuccino engine, but the turbo would be way more fun. What? Well, well, the tr- cappuccino engine's turbo too. Well, I, I know, but like turboing the boat anchor in the metro. Well, the the metro engine actually. So the thing is, it's funny about metro engines; they can take a shitload of boost. Like you can put like I think thirty six pounds into them before oh. they before they it, before they actually experience like technical failure of like <laughs> block itself <laughs> like or the block itself just explodes. rapid unscheduled disassembly Got yeah it. like before like the block itself actually begins to like separate um like what's better made than a ford 351 yeah. then yeah no the bottom ends on metros are just really silly like people mm-hmm. made like 160 horsepower on them I love that it took 30 pounds of boost to get to 160 horsepower. Yeah. Like, well, I'm, I'm sure the heads do not flow well on the on the, the uh, single overhead cam version. Obviously, the Swift GTI is essentially a Hayabusa engine with a different head on it. But, yeah, I don't know anything really about the single overhead cam three-cylinder <sighs> sorry, or the four-cylinder. Um, so, sorry, 160 horsepower is what people can make like, and still have a vehicle that is okay to drive to a racetrack okay um apparently there's been 200 horsepower out of the three cylinder yes i remember those being fairly popular in lemons back in the day when they were cheap uh, yeah. but i don't remember people adding power to them because they had to put them in like the gp3 category or whatever so it's... The, the extremely low power category because although it was based on like power to weight and they'd weigh your car and you'd have to you know essentially get points deducted or added that's very interesting. That's a lot of power for a little three-cylinder, though. I can't imagine the clutch of the transmission liked it too much. No, no, it, you totally blow shit up. Okay, so... What about a Wagon RRR powertrain? All right, so here we go. Um, the non-theoretical horsepower limit, uh, this is a quote from a 2001 Geo Metro Forum post. Non-theoretical. The horsepower limit of a G13B dual-word cam four-cylinder is about 315 horsepower at the wheel. Um, yeah, but that's the four-cylinder twin cam. Not stable uh, long term, um, but after that you want to switch to a Honda engine. But you can get 200 horsepower to the wheels out of a G13B four-cylinder uh, for a reliable daily driver. Um, it's going down. Yeah, but that's a, a GTI. Bit. Yep. So hang on. So 
I do G- like G- the G-10, non-theoretical. Yeah, G10 <laughs> horsepower is 200 horsepower <clears throat> for a reliable daily driver. Oh. Yep. Okay. So that that is, at that point, after 200 horsepower, it starts to become a, a liability. Uh, the world's fastest Geo Metro um, had a, billet, a custom billet crankshaft, which is the failure point. Uh, and it did 161 miles an hour at Bonneville. Um, and then... That is so ridiculous. Yeah. Let's see. Here. I hope that it got some sort of record. Oh, no, it did. Yeah, no, that's actually in... That, that is actually the record holder three-cylinder turbo EFI. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Like, that car actually has, like, in its, like, specific class, like, stock engine, like, sure, not a stock swap. body, too. Yeah, stock body. Well, it, it's a modified body, but it's stock body work that's been modified. Um, but, yeah, uh, let's this see This was here. a fairly aerodynamic car, so I could see that. Let's hmm. see here. For the record, I do not want a 200 horsepower Geo Metro, but I'd like to drive one. I would love one. That sounds like a great way to kill yourself. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just partially why I don't want one. Um, let's see here. I'm still looking and seeing what we can do here for that. And now they're getting into tires and stuff. Um, okay, here we go. <coughs> this is a guy saying... 161 horsepower, uh, and he's gone through. His odometer broke, but he said he's worn out four sets of tires. Ah, due to just normal driving. I see. So, so it's been at that power level for some time. For some time with a broken odometer. I assume that has been turbocharged. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. So 161 horsepower reliable. I don't know if that's a commentary There's... to how good the engine is or how bad the odometers are. Yes, but, but there you go. Geo Metros can go 100, can have 200 horsepower and be just fine. I, just, I would just want to beat a Metro output on a Buick Invista. No, that's doable. Yeah, for yeah, sure. I would totally want to do that. There you go. I just right. want... Fine. Yeah, there you go. All right, bye.